Good morning, everyone. Today we're going to talk about automatic tray sealers. And on the agenda, we're going to uh, learn where it is found on Sigma's website, as well as the definition of the machine, where it's used in production, upstream and downstream equipment, and preferred manufacturers. On Sigma's website, you'll go to all categories and then to scroll down to tray sealer. And underneath that is automatic tray sealer. So for the definition and process of this piece of equipment, it basically takes a plastic tray, runs through a machine, film is applied to the top and heat sealed to seal the product inside. Sometimes vacuum or nitrogen is used to help uh, preserve the product and the machines can be inline or rotary. So the benefits of using an automatic tray sealer, the product is kept fresher, uh, it's leak proof in most cases, uses recyclable materials, and can be recycled afterwards. Excellent presentation and for it's easier for customers to use. You'll think uh, frozen dinners, those go from the freezer to the microwave, no problems. I did want to pass this around, it's a, an example of uh, a tray sealed product. Uh, on the picture, some of the examples are an uh, olive platter. Um, we've got some, looks like cooked meat, uh, cooked burgers, uh, mashed potatoes, you've all seen those in the store, and fresh vegetables that are in, an, in a tray, uh, tray pack. So when I first got this category, I realized that this was what I was presenting, I thought it would be pretty clear cut. Uh, once I dug into it a little bit, as with most categories, it is a little more complicated than just a tray with product in it in the sealed. There are so many different variables as far as the type of tray. There's plastic, board, aluminum trays. They can be round or square, oval, have multiple cavities. The film can be heat resistant, peelable, resealable, perforated, and the list goes on. There's so many variables in that. So I wanted to touch on modified atmosphere packaging or a MAP system. This basically extends the life, shelf life of fresh foods. And um, it's, for the most part, the gas in the package helps ensure that it stays fresh for as long as possible. For example, red meat uh, requires a high oxygen level to keep that red color on the meat. And bread requires low oxygen. And then vegetables, they typically use a mixture of gases to keep them fresh. For upstream and downstream equipment, um, it depends on the, the production line, the, the product that is uh, being produced. Um, but you could probably find denesters, fillers, weighing equipment, uh, upstream, of course, conveyor would be on both sides. And uh, downstream, lidding or capping equipment, labeling equipment, case tapers, that sort of thing. So this is a pretty rough uh, illustration of a poultry production line. And you can see this tray sealer is right smack in the middle of it. Um, so you've got weighing equipment uh, beforehand and then uh, labeling and x-ray equipment afterwards. So this video shows the process of the, the unit, how it works. So the conveyor takes the uh, filled tray, pushes it onto uh, the, into the chamber, and then the plastic film is applied, raised up, and is sealed by heat, and then pushed off uh, into the another conveyor. And we've all been, you know, in Walmart or a larger grocery chain and, and seen the packages of meat uh, supplied there. So you have like a meat grinder in the back of the store there, a dumper, hopper, and then uh, portioning and x-ray or metal detection there. It drops it right into the tray.
and then into the chamber of the tray sealer. Okay, so the manufacturers that we prefer are Oryx, Riser, Ultrasource, and Ameripak. These machines can typically be, typically be found in medium to large scale operations um, in the food industry mainly. You can see the, the meat the tray of meat, of course. Uh, there you can see an example of uh, cheese, cheese slices in a tray. It looks like potato salad and then your frozen frozen dinners. For purchasing, we want to know the last tray size used, uh, the length, width, and height, and then if you know the tray number, that's important. Uh, the number three tray is what we typically find in, um, so for example, the, the example of the grocery store that was using a tray, a three, number three tray. Um, those are the most common from what I understand. Uh, and for purchasing, we also need to know if there's additional tooling and any other options like print registration or the map system. And for sales, we, we need to know what they're packaging and what works best for their production line, whether it's inline or rotary. The videos that I showed were inline. And then also sales will need to know, one to check to see if they have any other needs as far as filling equipment, case packing, that sort of thing. Our engineering questions. So the, one of the main things is, uh, is it rotary or inline? That's gonna set the tone for the rest of the questions. Uh, if it's rotary, how many stations? If it's inline, how many lanes? Of course, uh, min and max tray size as far in, as well as you know how many uh, fillers and the maximum film roll, maximum width, that sort of thing. Our Sigma-owned example is a Cook Ilpra rotary automatic tray sealer. It has four sealing stations, programmable touchpad controls, and digital temperature controls. So for the summary for the presentation, it's a basic uh, principle of using a, a tray filled with product, goes through the machine to have film sealed on the top. And sometimes uses a map system for uh, to help for specific products, to help for freshness. And as mentioned earlier, there's lots of variations of tray sizes, types, shapes, and film. And uh, it's mostly used in the food industry for fresh, frozen, or snack foods. And medium to large facilities are the ones that use this for the most part. Any questions or comments?